Hey there listeners, it's Jake. Today's topic is about stopping self-sabotage. And since Craig and I were waxing deep and rambled on longer than expected, this will be a two-part podcast. I hope you all enjoyed this first part. Now let's get to the podcast. Welcome back to the Troubleshooting Like Podcast. I'm your host, Craig Poston, with my co-host, Jay Peters, where we talk about various topics, sharing our experiences on life and finance. Hey, what's going on, man? What's up? Yeah. Hey, uh, how's your goals been going? Yeah, they've been, they've been going pretty good, man. I actually haven't paid attention to, like, the actual goals recently. I'm not going to lie. Um, so, like, you know, let's say, like, let's start from, like, last year, right? I had, like, I had a bunch of goals. I had I had way too many goals. Um, so, and, like, specific, like, of course, you know, real estate was one of them, uh, yeah. investing just in general. Um uh, of course, getting more fit, right? Like dropping some weight, you know, getting more muscle. That was one of them. Um, learning a new language, trying to pick up like the harmonica, like all this stuff, like all this stuff that wasn't necessarily what I wanted, but it was just things that I thought could grow me in different areas. Um, and I kind of, I flopped on a lot of them. Uh, I kind of dropped a, a, the ball on a bunch of like the harmonica, never even picked it up, um, even from setting that goal. Uh, the language thing, it kept up for like a good while. Like I want to say it kept up for like a hundred or so odd days. And then I dropped that one. Um, but other than that, man, like real estate, real estate's been going pretty good. Uh, you know, it's the new year, happy new year. Um, but, uh, you know, in the past year I was able to get two duplexes. Um, uh, let's see, physique wise. And for me, it's more than just being consistent in the gym. Right. Like I, I didn't drop down to the weight I really wanted to. Like I dropped down to it and then I looked at myself and I didn't, and I realized that that's not what I wanted to look like. That wasn't necessarily the goal. Um, like the specific number wasn't the goal, I should say. Yeah. It was the physique. So, um, I stopped really caring about what the number was and just started looking at the physique and seeing how I can improve on that. Um, and the other things, like, you know, the others kind of just fell to the waistline. Like they just kind of stopped being priorities. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, my focus, I, I'm one of those people, like, I have, like, very low attention span. So, like, if something isn't, um, not necessarily entertaining, to me, it's more challenging. Like, I, I, I have this need to feel a challenge, like, uh, whether that's, like, in a physical sense, in a, like, intellectual sense, uh, maybe not emotionally. I'm not a fan of being emotionally challenged, but, um, <laughs> but, but other stuff, right, like, I enjoy the challenge, right? I, like I enjoy working out because it's not an easy feat, right? It, like it's easy to lift a certain amount of weight. It's not easy to lift weight that's higher than that, right? And yeah. that, that's what I like about it. Um, uh, consistency is not easy, so that's something I, I've enjoyed. Um, but yeah, man, uh, the goals that I cared about have fruition. The goals I didn't care about uh, provided nothing. Or the bud is still there and will not grow any further. Yeah, but but, I guess uh, that I guess that would go along with what, what this title is, huh? We uh, yeah. uh, self sabotage. <laughs> yeah. but, yeah. but how's your goals, man? Like, yeah, uh, you also making some moves, doing some things. And I'm 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 hitting some, you know. Uh, I I still feel like I self sabotage myself, but uh, yeah. the the real estate, obviously, uh, we talked about it before. Uh, I did get get a property, but I'm setting my goal to end on my birthday to make a birthday resolution. That's right. That's right. That's yeah, right. versus a uh, a New Year's resolution. Now, mm. some things that I have to put in perspective with the year, like budget wise, like I might want to set it off to 12 months because it makes sense. Uh, mm. A certain amount of money saved to be able to use on my birthday resolution, that type of stuff I might, mm. or how I set up the, the accounts to pull money, whatever, mm. uh, it, it might be based off of the year. And uh, th- that'll be, you know, like I say, a goal like that. Uh, but uh, I won't say I'm hitting all my goals. Uh, again, it's one of those things that if you don't pay attention, you can have it written down, look at it every day. But if that's not one of the main targets and i think the property was the main target and that's why i hit it but i also wrote them on their properties so i have to do one more before my birthday so that's the, mm. <laughs> so that was something i i had to uh, make sure i paid attention to all right and for the for the listeners when's your birthday just to remind them oh yeah february 17th okay yeah there you yeah, go. Yeah. There you so go. Yeah, it's, it's not that far away that's one of the reasons why i was okay mm. with using that yeah, yeah it's not <laughs> 
No, because that's gonna like mine. Because mine, mine's at the end of November, so yeah. you know, November thirtieth for those that listen and slash care. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I feel like you know ours are pretty close to like the the season of like the actual New Year, right? Yeah. Yours is actually close to like the Chinese New Year, so I guess you could use that thing. <laughs> yeah, full lunar <laughs> calendar. Yeah. yeah, but no, 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 that's why I was able to. Uh, I would because I've I've heard about that before. Where they use uh, birthday resolutions instead of mm-hmm. like New Year's resolution. To oh, then it's a better that. it's a better metric because what does the New Year really like signify for you? Right, it, it doesn't yeah. it doesn't have like true significance to the person specifically. It's, yeah, it's a new significance to you know the world in general, which is great. But how does that help you measure your growth? Right, so like yeah. your age, your age is something that will always continue to increase. Right. So you would think, I mean, life's not linear, right? But you would think that if your age increased in certain things like income, uh, intelligence or wisdom, yeah. uh, business like aptitude, stuff like that would also increase, uh, which necessarily isn't true, but it's things that you can put a metric on. And like there's like a specific date, like, well, this day on my birthday, what did I do? Right? Did I just go to the club? Did I just have like a family meeting? Yeah. yeah. Like, how much was in my pocket during that time? Um, and I think I talked about the story like once. Um, is where like this guy he was talking about. Uh, I think he was like twenty five, twenty six, when he realized that he literally lived the same life two years in a row because on his on both birthdays, on his twenty fifth and twenty sixth birthday, he yeah. was in the same spot at the same club with the same amount of money in his pocket, in his bank account, than the previous one. So, and then that's what really helped him flip his uh, his psyche, is yeah. that he wanted to then focus on growing certain things so that the next year, it, like 27, 28, there was some sort of growth. Like I'm saying, it's not specific to economics, but it could be like totally different things. Like you could have a more healthy relationship with your spouse or your kids, right? You could have a... Uh, better outlook on life, your quality of life could have grown, right? Yeah. But that was just like his specific um, case to where he noticed that his economic standing at that point did not change, and it hadn't been like a whole entire year, a whole entire three hundred sixty-five days had gone by, and yeah. nothing changed. Yeah, no, no. Then uh, again, back to the title, self sabotage, right? That's you know, Kind of like one of those things, right? You start to, you have to measure it in some kind of way. Figure out, like, okay, what am I doing, and why have I been doing the same thing over and over again? Yeah, yeah. and that, yeah, that's a good way. And and like you said about the significance, that yeah, a birthday is more significant than a new year. Like, I mean, we all try to do this these goals and go like, okay, I'm gonna lose weight, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that by the by the new year. Mm-hmm. But everyone does it, and what is like, what does that mean? You may not mean anything to you. Uh, it's a good a good, you know, way to keep up with it. But then by the time you get to October, are you still tracking it the same way? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Cause I know sometimes even my budget, I'm by October, I'm not tracking it the same way. Like yeah. I, I have to go back and like, okay, all right, we did this. All right. You know, like to try to yeah, keep catching. something going. Yeah. 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 And so like my, uh, uh, other goals too, were the, like improvement in my career. Right. So Ooh. it is our career. Yeah. Uh, so basically, making sure I'm learning something new or trying to get a new certification or something like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. So that that's something that I'd start paying attention to when I was doing a little research, looking at this self self sabotage, and I'm like, okay, well, why haven't I got a new certification in the last mm-hmm. few years? Mm-hmm. Right. Like, and it, it it all you put something else in front of it, and mm-hmm. and, and obviously when it comes to certification, you have to kind of put out this certain type of effort because mm. yeah, you're, you are you got to get a long time so you can study and you got to actually in, you know, making sure that you're either memorizing or remembering or finding a way, a good way to learn mm. uh, exactly what you're reading or in these questions that you're trying to answer, do you know how to answer them correctly? So like, it's a lot of effort that you put out just so you can get, you know, gain a new certification. And it helps with the resume. That doesn't always mean you know exactly what the hell you're talking about. But like, no, no, yeah. Yeah, it's a good good entry into the doorway of, so this company has been looking for this certain type of person. And you happen to have the certifications and everything else to go behind it. And they're like, okay, look, we'll give you a try. 
you know, but that doesn't mean when you walk in the door, you understand what they're working on. Right. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. So, but again, you know, I, I feel like I don't push myself hard enough, even though I'm, I'm busy, but I still feel like I'm not, you know, it's feel like that, that busy where you're running around in a circle versus yeah. like, yeah. And instead of like, uh, moving Focus, forward. Doubt. Yeah. 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 yeah and we talked about it before. Like, like that's just, that might be just a lot of people in general, their, their lack of focus or, um, the feeling of getting small things done versus getting the actual large goal done is, is what's kind of might be stressing them out even more, right? It's because they think that the amount of activities may be good, right? The amount of activities that they're doing, but if you actually look at like, if you are actually measure it, like where that moves the scale up or down it may not be moving at all, right? Yeah. Because all those activities may not have um, any relation. They may not actually be producing anything. Yeah. And it might just be like uh, running on like a hamster wheel. Yep. Right? Yeah. Right? Like you're doing, uh, you're working. You are putting in work. Like that thing is moving, but you are you are not moving. Yeah. Right? Um, and I, I think it's just like a, a thing a lot of people do. And like I said, I'm guilty of it too. Like I do a lot of things, like just literally a lot of things. And I constantly say I'm busy, but, and I, what I realized is that like a lot of people that say that they're busy, it's more that they're not focused. Yeah. Right. And it, and it's like, and the reason like, if you wouldn't have to tell me you're busy, if you know, you're like, if, if I asked you like, how's everything going? And you're saying you're busy, like you wouldn't have to tell me, like I yeah. would know, like if I'm that close to you, then I would already know you're busy. Cause I wouldn't even be able to have any of your time, right? Like your time would be just like too precious to even, uh, utilize just to speak with me. So, um, so I, I think it's like, not that they're busy, but like, they're more like busy bodied, busy minded, yeah. um, like unfocused on, on what they actually need to do. And it's, it's a common saying, like, especially in your younger ages that you don't necessarily know what you want to be when you grow up. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing or anything, but I think the closer or the earlier you get to that point mm-hmm. to where you can identify and you can clearly see the vision of who you want to be, what you want, who you want to spend time with, where you want to live, then it'll make everything else. Like it'll clear the path for what you need to do. Yeah. Nah, that, uh, that's man. That kind of like spot on. Cause I remember, uh, we were texting one day and you were like, Hey, I know, I know you're busy. And that's why I text you back. It's like, no, I'm on the organized. That's just going <laughs> <right now. laughs> Yeah. 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 Cause that's, that's exactly how I felt. Cause I was like, man, I forgot to do this, man. I forgot to do that. I was like, and, and I know my wife tells me all the time, write it down. And uh, yeah, I write some things down, but then some things I don't, you know? Yeah. And then yeah. It, it, and it's a good thing to write, write it down. Cause mm-hmm. like you still remember it in some kind of way. Uh, cause like we, you, you go to work for eight hours, eight to 10 hours, right? Sometimes you just like, everything gets dumped after you leave work. You're like, nah, I'm done. You know? And yeah. then like, you forget about everything you said you're going to do that day. Yeah. And yeah. like the, like literally I was just watching another, so I've watched this video before and I forgot who the guy is. So I can't really, um, like give him credit for it, but it's, there's this guy on YouTube. He does like a lot of productivity stuff. And the way he put it is that like your, your brain is kind of like a computer. Right. So, and you know, we're in it. So I kind of ate that shit up like so easy because I was like, oh, he's speaking to me, man. He's speaking to me. Um, but what you're saying is that like your brain will have all these ideas, right. And like a computer, you only have a certain amount of RAM, right. A random access memory. Yeah. Um, and the, each idea is kind of like having, uh, multiple background processes. Yeah. Right. So it's taking up all that RAM that, that you need to actually function. So what happens is that it'll start tossing them. Right. Unless you start putting them down like somewhere else for them to reside and to kind of hold space like on a hard drive, like where it'll stay there, it'll just kind of get lost. Right. Or kind of get forgotten about, or it just becomes more and more of a background process that it's no longer being provided the utility or the, the resources it needs. Right. So just writing it down, not necessarily on any specific place. Like, like what I do, like we talked about in the previous podcast, I use the tasks app that Google has. And I just write it down. Like literally, I just wrote down one to tell you to give me the intro that you have yeah. for your stuff. Right. And it's just for me to write it down. So it's not like while we're in this conversation, one, I don't just bring it up randomly, even though I just did, um, or, <laughs> or, or two, that 
it then gets lost and then like i'm stressed out later that i don't have this and i'm trying to do all this stuff right um but like just spilling it out onto a piece of paper onto an app and then organizing it later whenever you get a chance like say if you're um uh, on the toilet like the, uh, people are on the toilet with their phone i don't yeah. really care like um health whatever it is i don't care um but uh like that's a good time to like kind of just scroll through your things and just kind of start boxing them, like time boxing them, put them as tasks, put them as calendar events, yeah. you know, send out an email, whatever it is, right? Um, so yeah, it, it that that's just the way it was put, and I enjoyed that analogy to like computers and technology. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, you know, along the lines with the self sabotage, obviously we're talking about all all the different things that prevent you from hitting your goals or hitting certain things you want to do in life. And then, uh, so one of the thoughts is, uh, where do you want to go? Right. So if you start kind of like they, a lot of them say, right. Uh, start with the end in mind, where do you want to go? Right. And then if you find out you want to do X, right. And then now you start to think about, all right, why, why haven't I hit that goal yet? Okay. Let me plan for it. And then if you realize that you're kind of like, dragging your feet here and there, now, that's where you can kind of start to see like, oh, there's a pattern. And that's where your self-sabotage comes in. Because I I remember when I was uh, living in Mississippi, I went to go, I, I don't know, it's just sometimes I just get, you know, get in my thoughts, right? And I went to the reservoir and I was just sitting down. I, I don't know if I was at a picnic table. I can't remember if I was just sitting on the ground, one of the two, or sitting on my car. I don't know, but I was looking at the water and I was just thinking, I was like, okay, well, I want to do this. And then I was just like, so, so why, why don't I do it? You know, and mm-hmm. that's how the, the thought went through my mind. It's like, I, I, I want to move away from here. Then it's like, why don't I didn't do it? It's kind of like that. And then you, you kind of, instead of thinking about reasons why, think about what can you do to, yeah. to leave, right? So after that, I basically went and got a second job. Uh, and uh, but it, <laughs> Uh, it's, it's not a glamorous job, right? That the second job, uh, it was, uh, what was that? Stripper. No, no, no. I might have stayed there. I was like, I don't know what's going on here, right? Well, I don't want to go. No. no, it was like uh, CC's Pizza. That's what it was. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. CC's Pizza. Yeah, you know, got free pizza and made money. That, yeah, that, yeah. It, it, so I was saving money all the way around. Uh, and that was one of the things I did is I just kept putting that, that check away. Uh, and I would, might use it to go uh, visit uh, who is my wife now in Dallas and uh, just, you know, get a feel for leaving, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, and basically what I would do is, you know, every time I put money away, it's, it, I only use a little bit to travel, then the rest will be for the move. And, uh, and I eventually got to a point where I could move because I'd already finished college and I was just like, well, I mean, I have nothing to hold me back. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm like, I don't have any kids here. I don't have any, you know, like a strong relationship. I might have been, you know, I might have had certain friends here and there, but like not to the point where I couldn't just say, uh, let's go try something new. Because uh, and at the end of the day, you could still make a phone call and just say, hey, how are you doing? You know? Yeah. And nowadays, like with the uh, FaceTime or some type of, uh, you know, video conference. Yeah. You can talk. You can talk to anybody you need to talk to. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I did that. Uh, what was that on Christmas with uh, my parents? And mm. I bought my dad this bottle of vodka. He wouldn't open it, so I bought myself the same bottle of vodka. And I was like, "All right, Dad, we're gonna open this bottle of vodka together." So he yeah. opened his, and I opened mine, and then we had, you know, we had drinks uh, over the conference call, and then yeah. you know, then basically it talked to my parents, and my sister was there, so it was kind of like you, you you created that. Uh, you know, pretty much interaction. Being, interaction yes, exactly. Yeah. Like, like you're right there. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna try to keep that up because it's actually, you know, it actually worked out. I actually, was very happy to talk and everything. <laughs> and it, it is a different interaction between like just on the phone because, uh, you know, that's the reason why we're doing Zoom calls, right? We're not just on the phone with each other, just talking it up. Yeah. Um, it's because there's a you receive something different from that interaction looking at their reaction right because that's how yeah. people are they're they're very uh like body language is like most of the conversation yeah right how people react to what you're saying how people um kind of give you certain looks or you know kind of appraise you like these are small things right yeah. um but kind of going back to like 
like knowing where you want to go. I think another thing to ask yourself is like, what are you willing to do to get to where you want to go? Oh yeah. Right. Like, and I think the reason why I say that is because some people, they'll say where they want to go and it's like a place that, you know, it looks great, but they don't realize all the rough roads it takes to get there. And then they quit when they hit too rough of a road yeah. and they just kind of settle for the next thing. Right. And I'm not saying that they can't still get that stuff. It's just that if they would have thought ahead in mind, like how rough that journey would have been and still did it anyways, I think they would have just kept pushing and yeah. kept pushing. And, and when they got to it, like, well, I expected this, right? Like it, I didn't think it was going to be easy to get to a certain amount of money. I didn't think it was going to be easy to get to uh, a healthy relationship or a healthy marriage, right? Yeah. I didn't think it was going to be easy to raise children, right? So why would I now quit? I have yeah. no reason to quit. Like, I already thought about this. Like this was already accounted for. So I'm just going to keep going. Yeah. And I, you know, and th- so this is kind of like my thought on that, right? Are, are you willing to KO Mike Tyson in his prime for your goal? You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, I, like, like what, what would you do for, you know what I'm saying? For that goal? Like, this is something that you're really hungry for. And, mm-hmm. and you, you know what I'm saying? We're not saying actually go do that, you know, because obviously you can't travel back in time, but it's that thought. Like, would you, like, would you, you know what I'm saying? Like, that, you also can't you, KO Mike Tyson. You, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, well, I mean, the, the, but the, the whole thing is, is like, how hungry are you? Like, right. like in your mind, if you could visualize it, could you, would you do that for your goal? Right. And a lot of times that's what I, um, I won't say I'm, I'm trying to KO Mike Tyson, but like, I'm basically thinking, I'm going to tell him. Yeah, yeah, hey man, hey, <laughs> maybe I'll get a chance to meet him because yeah, 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 I'm a fan. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, so it, and a lot of times what I do is I'm like, what would you do, like, like for my kids, for my family? What, like, how how strong of a goal would you, you know, like how strong is this hunger to get to this goal? Mm-hmm. Uh, and a lot of times, like, okay, when I think about it, man, I have this like, like I'm about to go for a run feeling, like, like I need to run like ten miles, like. That's how like hungry that feeling starts to get. And I like to keep that every now and again, think about that so I could try to at least accomplish a goal that's that's really strong to me. You know, just like hitting a, you know, a million dollar net worth, stuff like that. Just have that feeling of, you know, that strong feeling, just keep it there. And uh, so, because you never know, right? You you never know how, how you're gonna get there. You might get there in a year, you might get there in two years, mm-hmm. three years, you know, you don't know. But if you keep that hunger right there and then you don't, you don't worry about uh, like losing, right? The, uh, cause that's one of the things with self-sabotage is like, you have this fear of failure. Like you, you're afraid you're going to lose. You're afraid something's going to happen. Instead of thinking about the win, right now, nah, what would it feel like if I won? Mm. Right. And that, and that's how, that's how I look at it. And I don't, I try not to think about the, the fear of like, okay, it could fail. And then if you did, right. If you did think about the fear, what, what could you do to resolve it? So like instead of looking at okay well it will secure you yeah exactly right just like how you use insurance to uh, mitigate risk for yourself mm. right I mean you know for your car or for your home like how about you come up with your own insurance plan for yourself and mm. that way you can still accomplish your goals but then have this safety security net that you need mm. yeah so uh, that's that's uh, that's kind of like what I think about it. and that's how I you know I realize certain things I do self sabotage because if I have that hunger certain. Uh, uh, towards certain goals but then other things i'm like dragging my feet i won't like for a certification right just set the date you know, hey, set the mm-hmm. date and the rest will come right so like I, you set the date a month away uh make sure you have the books and the material that you need and just get to work like but then when i'm hesitant to set the date then i know i'm like okay you're in the way of yourself you yeah. know so yeah that, that, that's yeah. how i look at it yeah so that that goes along the lines of our next point where it was uh, self-evaluate yourself, right? Yeah, mm. uh, because uh, if you can't, which a lot of us can't, right? It's hard to evaluate or you know ourselves. Basically, we need someone else to tell us, and then uh, you got to and you got to know you got to trust this person too, right? Like, hey, if you tell me, what do you have you noticed about me? You know, mm. uh, and when it comes to this, well, I noticed you do this, right? And if it's somebody you can trust, and you can kind of just sit there and evaluate, think about it. Well, I mean, like I do, I kind of just sit alone sometimes and just kind of think about why haven't I did this or or what's 
what's going on here? All right. Yeah. So, yeah. So I mean, like, what I did on like my birthday, right? So back in November, what I did on my birthday is I text like I text my family, like I text my mom, my dad, I text my sister, yeah, I text my best friend, uh, or best friends, and I text I think my girl, um, uh, who's my fiance by now, uh, if you didn't know, um, but uh, yeah. you know, so what I did is um, I text them and I ask them, hey, in in celebration of my birthday. And like my just my eternal hunger for growth, what is like one thing that I could do better to help you, right? Because I am like a high supportive person, right? I always want to help others, help grow others, and help them become better. So, and then you know I attend to self evaluate, but and we've talked about it before is that there were things that I wasn't even paying attention to. Right. And like you said, like those other people kind of have to point them out for you. And that's why it's good to run with a certain crew that will tell you that you are doing things wrong. You are doing things good, not one or the other. Like you yeah. can't just have like a cheerleader behind you just saying, hey, keep going, keep going. Your light's yeah. broken, but keep fighting Mike. Right. You, you, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? And then you can't have the people that are like, oh, shit, you're in good shape. Make some better shape. Right. Yeah. He's going to whoop your ass. Right. Like you have to have that that nice balance of like yeah you're doing great in the gym you're training, but Mike's got a little bit more of an edge and so you need to work on these certain things. Right? Yeah. So what I took by myself is to ask them, hey, what can I do to just be better, right? Be and just one specific thing. You don't have to give me the entire list because I'm sure there is, right? But just give me one specific thing that I could be a better uh, boyfriend, fiance, if I could be a better. Uh, friend to you, if I could be a better son to you, if I could be a better brother to you, right? And really take in that information because those are the really hard questions. It's, and it's not really a hard question, but the answer may be hard to hear. Yeah. Right? You not being able to accept your flaws and everyone has them, right? Or And not being accept, able to accept that you need to work on those flaws is huge self-sabotage to not just you, but to like future things, right? Because if you're not willing to work on something, how can you expect children that you may have to also work on themselves? Yeah. Right. How can you expect your spouse to work on themselves? How can you expect your, your family and the people that you, you associate with to work on themselves? So I think it all starts with you, right? Like, like Michael Jackson says, it's the man in the mirror, right? Stop blaming everyone else. Just look in the mirror and other things like it's just a law of attraction. The things you do, the things you speak into the world will attract to you because, because you basically pay attention to what it is, right? So the law of attraction, right, is say if I if I want to go buy a new car, right? And I started driving the new car or I go test out, I don't necessarily get it, but then I start looking around as I'm driving my old car, I'm looking at all the that specific car like everywhere. Right, that car just like son somehow pops up everywhere, and but before I even did it, like it was they were still there. It's just I didn't notice it, right? So that's yeah. the law of attraction: is that you paid attention to something, and now you're constantly seeing it in the the big space of everything else. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely agree with that. And I do remember that text, and then that's that's why I I knew it probably was a, a combo, and I think I did say that it was a combo, uh, like type of situation where like we both needed to work on collabing more when it mm. came to the to the podcast and I think that was because I was like it, it it's it's me too so it's not just you you know so yeah that, yeah <laughs> yeah so I, I mean I don't know if you noticed um you know because I was looking up other things that that kind of show a self-sabotage you know mm. perfectionism right that was one thing that I was looking at and they said that perfectionism can cause self sabotage, which is that and that's pretty common amongst engineers for sure. Yeah. Right. Cause like before they want to put out a product, they want it to be perfect, you know, mm. or before they do something, they, they, they want the situation to be perfect. That, I mean, that could be the same for investors too, right? Uh, when it comes to, uh, they want to make sure that they don't lose any money. So they're trying to like make sure the situation is just perfect before they, uh, go ahead and invest their money in this property. And instead of like, okay, look at the numbers that you did. Uh, they look like they're, they're they're working. So why you know why are you waiting waiting for the perfect situation, right? And I think the difference is like investor wise is that there's a difference between like perfectionism and standards. Yeah, right. Like so, when an investor looks at something, they they really do their homework, 
or they should be doing their homework. I'm not saying they all do. Like I'm not saying I do all of my homework, yeah. but there are certain criteria that have to meet for a certain threshold, right? That they will say, "Hey, I will get this, or I will not get this." Right? So, like saying, like, like Warren Buffett, all right? Warren Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway, they are a uh, private equity company that buys equity into businesses. Yeah. Right. And you don't see him buying like all these different businesses, right? It's because he finds certain businesses that meet his criteria. And while well, that's not necessarily perfectionism, it, he is trying to get like, he has a specific formula to make sure that they meet a criteria that I will provide. But I will say like perfectionism, as in like, if I'm working on a product and I need it to be the best thing in the world for it to work, that can kind of um, go into like that paralysis by analysis yeah, type yeah. thing to where you're overthinking everything and if you kind of just swap your thoughts to the thing of you not being able to please everyone and that you also will not always be pleased 100%, right? Yeah. And there, there's a story, and someone else said it. Um, I think it's the the man, the boy, and the mule. I, I can't I can't remember what the actual story is. Yeah. But the, the basic of the story is that the, the man and the son and the mule, right, they're all... Like the man and the son are walking, then the mule is just kind of like tethered behind him, right? Uh, people are coming up, they're like, oh, that's a waste of a mule. Like, yeah, why isn't it carrying someone, right? Um, so, you know, the father puts the son on the mule, they're, they continue to walk. Someone comes up to them and, like, ah, oh, what a terrible son making his uh, father walk while he's just sitting on the mule, right? Um, and then the uh, they swap, right? The father gets on the mule, the son is walking, and then people come around, they're like, what a terrible father making their son walk while he's just sitting on the mule, right? Yeah. And then at the end of it, they end up carrying the mule, right? And and while that sounds ridiculous, it all sounds ridiculous. Yeah. Right? But it was all dictated on how they, how the other people outside of them perceived it. Yeah. Right? So, and the story is that you can never uh, please everyone. Right? Yeah. So why why would you even attempt to, right? Um, And like things in the military, right? Like, like a lot of us say like 80% is good enough. Right. Um, and the reason why is because while perfect is ideal, it is not reality because yeah. things have deadlines and you still need to go out and get shit done instead of focusing on what you can only yeah. use at one time. Yeah. Because it, 80%, 80% is good. Like just, just put it out there. Yeah. Cause, uh, that was, uh, well, I think it might have been another one. Oh, yeah, no, it was uh, it was another point. It was lack of communication, where it was, uh, where you're not asking for help, right? And mm. to get that, yeah, you're missing the deadline because you made me think yeah. about it when you said deadline. Yeah, it was like a, a lack of communication to like they ask for help at the right time, so you can uh, go ahead and tell everybody, hey, no, no, I need I need a little help so we can get this done. Versus like you're holding on to it, then you get afraid of telling people that you you're failing, and then it end up turning to like imposter syndrome. Yeah, so it was like mm -hmm. when I yeah when I read, I was like, dang, that is that's pretty crazy. You can create your own imposter syndrome, even though you like you usually you get that when you first start at a job because you don't understand all their policies and procedures of how things are done, and yeah. you're like, oh, this job's not. I don't think it's the job for me, or I don't I'm not qualified for this job, even though they hired me. Mm -hmm. All right, but like in this sense where you created by just like keeping it a secret that you don't know what you know you don't you don't know what you you know i guess what you don't know right yeah and you, yeah you just won't tell people like hey i just need a little help to get me through this little section right here to get me going yeah, yeah so yeah that was so yeah when you said that it made me think about that one and then another another point was uh it said uh moderation right like uh if you don't do something in moderation could be uh, a way to sabotage it you know you over drink you know that get you know so say if you needed to get a presentation done but you don't even know it, 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 everyone doesn't like presentations some people love presentations right yeah but the, the fact that you got to put in the work and everything prepare but then the night before you get drunk you know uh, and then you end up waking up late and then you everything just starts starts to fall behind but in the beginning you self-sabotage yourself because you didn't really want to do it but then you end up getting drunk right so mm. like th that was Oh, one way it looked at it, and then another one was um, uh, running on empty, right? Which I mean, it, a lot of uh, busy people they they they'll do that, right? Don't don't get enough sleep, just because uh, I'm trying to remember exactly, but like it was mostly that when it came to that situation, 
Mm. I actually had this stuff uh, all on here. All right. Because, uh, but going into moderation, like, it doesn't necessarily have to be like drinking, right? Like, no, 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 out, no, no working no. out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Working out too much could help. And, and working out, it has been proven to increase your health. And drinking has, has been proven to increase your health, right? Like people's uh, studies have shown like the, what glass of wine a day, glasses was yeah. help thin your blood, stuff like that. Right. Um, so yeah, moderation in general is, uh, what should be the focus not necessarily on the specific activity but the focus of it like even people like that have uh like they've done studies on like smoking cigarettes right where like stuff like nicotine nicotine's not necessarily addictive it's the like the act of smoking is addictive right but you know smoking one cigarette a week technically wouldn't shorten your lifespan at all it wouldn't really damage your lungs and i'm just saying that i'm not saying go smoke right i'm also not saying go drink I would say go work out though. Um, yeah. but, but, uh, what I'm saying is that like moderation can be taken from both negative and positive activities. Yeah. No, uh, it, it, uh, it was, yeah. Cause it was an article I was reading last night. That's why I was like trying to get that one back because it, it made a lot of sense. Uh, in another one it, with that moderation, it was talking about, um, uh, I guess setting boundaries. Uh, mm. If you're uh, a people pleaser, mm. right? Yeah, uh, that's another way. And I guess you know what? And now, now reading is make made. Uh, it makes a lot of sense because so say if you're working on a project, but other people keep asking you for help uh, for their with their project, and then you got a deadline and you can't hit that project. So I, I knew it was something that kind of I could understand it. Yeah, I was like it, it made sense to me. And then it's uh. Yeah, it was good that you hit the one on the gym because that was uh, one of their examples was like, you know, overdoing it at the gym where you, you end up not accomplish your goal. Yeah. You, yeah. 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 So you, you're too fatigued. Your body yeah. can't recover. And, yeah. yeah. But yeah, because that one, that one can happen a lot. The the one where you don't set the boundaries telling someone like, all right, I'll help you, but I have to get this done first. So, you know, yeah. and and yeah, that that would actually cause your own self-sabotage because you're, you're too much of a people pleaser or a, uh, you're too helpful, you know? Yeah. And I think we talked about it in the last part it was like the the yes but or yes and type of yeah. conversation like where you can still say yes, but you should also like box it in a certain way, right? So like say if you ask me to help on a project, like yes, but I'll need a little bit more time, or yes, and I'll need someone else to additionally help me because I'm working on so much other stuff at the moment, right? Um, so I think that'll help kind of like refocus your people pleasing because you can still help the person but you still need to say that you can't do it all right because yeah. your your time is valuable you can't run yourself incredibly thin right you need help right so like what i started doing recently is that i'll need help on on certain code right so if yeah. i'm like programming something uh i'll just put it out there to my group be like hey I'm trying to do this. What is the best way forward to do this so that I'm not just stuck in a rut right now? Because I caught yeah. myself doing that where like I was coding something and someone had someone else on the team had done it like way before. Yeah. And because I was too like big headed or too stubborn, I didn't ask and I didn't even search for it at, or to see if someone had done it. Yeah. Right. And then I'm not saying what they had was like perfect, but it was enough to get me going to in the right direction. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, the, the next point I was trying to make about running on empty, yeah, it it, it did go along the lines of like uh, you know working too hard or uh, being too short sighted about uh, a certain situation. So then uh, you you start to sabotage yourself uh, if you don't realize that okay I'm working on this, but then is it really helping me over here? And then you feel mm -hmm. like you kind of overdone it, right? So in in a sense, it was it it runs up there with that uh, moderation type uh, of point. Uh, and then we know this one, the uh, procrastination. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we all know that one. <laughs> I do that all the time. All right, everyone. Like I said in the very beginning of the podcast, this is part one of two for the topic of stopping self-sabotage. I hope you enjoyed this episode and are looking forward to the next one. Please like, subscribe, and share this out to anyone that you feel could benefit from our conversations.